right now we're located on land owned by Denver Housing Authority, which is the food desert community. So we have a lot of people in this neighborhood who don't have access to grocery stores who buy what they eat from the corner gas station or 7-Eleven. So the challenge here is to be able to grow vegetables and fish year round. So they're probably a little shy. Aquaponics is the science of using fish farm and wastewater. And I have about 20 pounds of tilapia in this tank which provide all the nutrients for all of the green growth that you see around you. What we do here is we build turnkey aquaponic systems, which are tropical growing systems integrated into a high altitude, cold climate greenhouse. Everything that you see right now in here can be operated on about 450 watts, which is light burning three light bulbs, which we designed, which allows us to maintain full growing productivity in both the fish and the plants year round. The fish, in this case, are just resident crappers. You feed them, they poop, they do their job. The water comes from the fish tanks through three net filters and these are just to catch large suspended solids like fish feces and uneaten fish food and plant material that might fall in under and back up and into this bed. So it's all gravity fed down in under the ground and up into this bed which also then gravity feeds into the lowest bed and back around. So the only power requirement is to get the water from the low point to the high point and then it makes its way all the way back around again. So my pump is sending the water up through the plumbing and that plumbing is feeding each of these downspout towers and then also feeding this tube which is full of water and going back into the bed below it. And then there's another tube just like this outside, which increases my growing space for that time of year that I don't have to worry about that freezing outside. Those 20 pounds of fish feces are laden with toxins, which are either ammonia or nitrites or other compounds, which are toxic to both the fish and the vegetables. So there's quite an intense and complicated bacteria system throughout this greenhouse, which is converting those toxins into nitrates, which are beneficial and taken up by the plants as a fertilizer. The net filters are just bird net. There's a baffle that forces that water to go through all the bird net before it can go to the next tank. And then the second filtration system is the worms and the gravel bed. The plants themselves do some filtration. And the hydrocoral is important not just as a medium for the plant roots to get hold of. It's clay balls. It's highly porous. It is one of the environments that my bacteria live in. So the nitrifying or nitrobacter bacteria, which convert the toxic nitrites and ammonia in the fish feces to nitrates, which are taken up by the plants, are light sensitive, especially UV sensitive. If they're exposed to the light, they'll die. So everything in here is covered or sheltered to provide a safe habitat for the bacteria. The other thing is the tomatoes really like this gravel bed because it gives them an opportunity to build a massive root ball. And this one particular plant, in two weeks, this will have its one year anniversary. And all of the large fruit that you see here is coming from this one plant. It's now 24 feet long. It's two weeks short of one year old. It's not only still yielding fruit, it's still growing. This structure, though it is a low-tech, low-energy consumption system that installed as you see it at about 500 square feet, 
is about $25,000. Here I just harvested beans a couple of days ago. Bush beans are one of those crops that do really well in aquaponics. Based on allocating a certain square footage of productivity to growing cash crops, which you would sell to restaurants or food wholesalers, you can cash flow a structure like this in about two years while still feeding a family of four. And you can see from the crown of these charred plants, I've cut dozens and dozens of leaves off of these two plants. I have kept myself in charred all summer just with these two plants. I've done the same thing with collards, with kale. It's scuzzy on me here. Our productivity here ranges from 300 to 500 pounds per month, depending on what we're growing in the time of year. This is a pretty nice red leaf lettuce, um, and you can see it's really firm, no pests, real healthy root. So the sustainability to me means not only producing food, protein, nutrition through all of the things that we're growing here, but also creating cash flow that allows a prospective owner to go to a bank and qualify for a loan based on the payback period from cash flow of what we're producing here. This is a new belt chive, which I just cut four days ago and you can see the rate of return growth is quite high. Um, this is a really good commercialization crop. So I can get about six pounds of chives every five weeks from one and a half square feet of growing space, which is about six times what you can expect to get in the ground or from the raft. This is kind of an experimental bed for me. You'll see that the spacing of the baskets is quite close, so I'm interested in the effect of crowding certain plants. This is celery, uh, which has done quite well in here. This particular variety of basil is doing pretty well in this system, and this has a pretty high rate of water circulation. I have two different varieties of chives in here. You want to pick and choose what you're, you're growing first, who you're going to sell it to, how much, how many pounds are they going to take, and then configure your system around that market demand. This particular system is designed with two primary consumer groups in mind one of which is in Afghanistan. Uh, I've done a lot of work in Afghanistan. I have Afghan investors who have joined me in this project to go beyond proof of concept and to transfer this technology into Afghanistan from Denver. We're able to do that because Denver and Kabul are at almost the same latitude, altitude. They share common climate and weather characteristics. So anything that works here is going to work just fine there in terms of the technology. The other user group here in Denver are food desert communities. So the idea of being able to produce both protein and fish and all the nutritive value from vegetables for these communities and to educate and train and employ people to operate these types of systems is very attractive.